Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast covers section 10.4, two sample Z and T tests for matched data. Often in the biosciences we measure an aspect of the same individual organism or objects before and after the application of a treatment with the purpose of understanding whether that treatment causes a change in the measured attribute. For instance, in the example details in section 10.4 of the book, we look at the weight loss due to competing in a one-day fencing competition by measuring the weight of the individuals before and after competing. Such data is called matched or paired data and is useful since it minimizes the number of confounding variables that would be present if we measured a different set of individuals before and after the competition. The size of the before and after samples is 13 individuals and so we would use a t-test. For a larger sample of 30 or more values, it is common practice to use the z-test. However, when the sample size is more than 30, then the z and t-tests give very similar outcomes and both can be used. For this reason, most computer programs do not implement two sample z-tests for paired data as a simple menu selection. Thus, this screencast will only cover t-tests and you should use this test for the larger sample sizes you encounter or see the book on how to do the z-test by hand. This is the script we are going to be using. You may wish to freeze the screencast to look at it in more detail. Or alternatively, you can download it from the resource centre. The command functions are in black, are all in lowercase, and you must enter them exactly as shown. The lines in green are notes to help your understanding of how the script flows. The words in blue are variable names and can be changed to suit your data. But you must be consistent in spelling and the use of lower and uppercase letters. And the data are in red. There are several ways to load data into R. See my screencast, Introduction to R, for more details. Looking at the first variable, you can see that we have used a C operator to load the data into R. So let's run the script. Track up to the beginning of the first line and click to place a cursor at the beginning of the script. You can now run the script line by line by pressing Ctrl R if you are using a Windows or Linux computer or Command Option R if you are using a Mac. Each time you run a line, it appears in the console window along with any results the command produces. So let's define the variables using the C operator. The first variable is the weight before variable and the second variable is the weight after. I now have to check if the variances are homogeneous. I'm going to do that using the var.test command. The var.test command gives me a p-value of 0 0.8529. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A peak value of 0 0.8529 is above our transition value of 0 0.05, indicating that there is not a significant difference between the variance of the samples and that we cannot reject our null hypothesis. This test informs us that we now need to do a t-test for equal variances. The t-test we are going to use is the t.test and we state that it is a pair test using the attribute paired equals true and we state that the variances are equal using the attribute var.equal equals true. If the variances weren't equal, we would use the attribute var.equals equals false. So let's do the test. We can see that it gives us a p-value of 0 0.0002834. This value is below our 0 0.05 transition value and suggests that there is a significant difference between the samples and that we can reject our null hypothesis. We can now accept our alternative hypothesis that there is a difference between the mean weights of individuals before and after a fencing competition. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.